Tres Minas is one of those places far from everywhere and suffers from the general phenomenon of rural depopulation. Its population density does not exceed 10 inhabitants per square kilometer. However, Tres Minas is one of the most important ancient mining sites and it is beginning to attract a large number of visitors. The visit to the Tres Minas mining complex begins at this observation point. From here we can see the Corta da Ribadeña. In mining, a corta, literally a cut, is a quarry, a hollow created where material is removed and it is therefore an indication of where further mining operations for mineral exploitation have occurred. There are three quarries in the Tres Minas mining complex. One of modest dimensions is the Lagoinas quarry. The other two are much larger. The Covas quarry and the Ribeirinha quarry. From inside the Ribeirinha quarry, we get a good idea of the amount of material that was removed from it. The study of the remains of water channels that run to the lip of this quarry tell us that large amounts of water were used for washing and processing the materials in the initial stages of exploitation. Some scholars point out that perhaps the water could also have been used to help advance the quarry work front, and they offer some theories about this. One of them proposes that wooden wedges would be driven into carefully chosen natural fissures. These would be drenched in water, so that when the wood wedges swelled, they would increase their volume and so break the rock. Another suggestion is that large fires would be built at the base of the quarry front in order to heat up the rocks, after which dropping large amounts of water on them would cause a thermal shock that would break the rock and thus facilitate its removal and processing. There are other engineers and scholars who do not agree with these theories and believe that water was used only to wash the materials, leaving the advance of the quarry front to manual excavation techniques. Further investigation is still ongoing. In any case, what is certain is that large quantities of water were delivered to these quarries by means of well-planned and constructed pipelines. In the same way, we know that significant amounts of water had to be removed. This is shown by several galleries like this one, whose obvious purpose was to drain water out of the quarry and direct it down into the valley. The curious shape of this gallery corresponds to the advance of the work front. As the work progressed in depth, a gallery was drilled at a suitable level to drain the water. When the depth of the dig increased, it became necessary to adapt the gallery or even make a new one. Ultimately, this resulted in the curious appearance of this gallery. Here in the Kovas quarry, a good number of galleries have been preserved, and by studying them, we discover how the mining work was carried out. In the early stages of excavation, material had to be removed from the quarry for processing. As the quarry floor increased in depth, however, vertical removal became increasingly difficult so galleries were open to enable the material to be removed horizontally. But when the quarry became even deeper, it was necessary to build a large extraction gallery that would allow the material to be transported to the valley. That was the most suitable place to build the large facilities needed to process the material.
This is the gallery that was built to remove the extracted material from the Covas quarry to the valley below. And just as with the Ribeirinha quarry, in the Covas quarry, also it was necessary to drain the water down into the valley. Therefore, it seems that the smart thing to do was the use of this gallery, intended for the removal of quarried material, to allow also for the drainage of water. And so it was done. The gallery was designed and constructed with both uses in mind. On the left side ran the drainage water. On the right side traveled carts loaded with quarried material. The tracks of the carts are clearly marked on the ground. 